champions, welcome back to Jatai Feathers Razor Fundamentals Part 2. Today we're going to expand upon our razor knowledge that we started on in the first class, which was the one length. And so today we're going to start opening up the razor stroke, because if you remember last time we did very, very tight stroke. This time we're going to start to open it up. And by opening up the stroke and taking a longer stroke when we cut, that's going to give us a little bit more movement, a little less weight, a little more airiness. And we're going to practice that doing the hardest haircut there is to do, which is a graduated bob. So since it's not as precise and exact as a scissor cut, it makes it a lot easier to deal with and you get much closer to perfection. And not everybody has perfect hair, so you can do this haircut on a lot more people. So without much further ado, let's get started. All right, so we've already gone through and sectioned off. We've taken a natural or center part to the crown from the crown to the occipital bone, occipital bone straight down to the center of the spine. From the occipital bone, I've sectioned off to that bump below the ear, which is the mastoid, and that gives me my whole center flat section in the nape. Now this is where we start to build our graduation, but it's hard to see. So you have to have a little bit of faith and just follow the pattern. Once we get into the second section up here, you really start to see the graduation take effect. In the center, I'm going to take a triangular, a little pizza pie section from the center right at the occipital bone. And I'm going to pin that hair out of the way. I'm going to take my feather razor. At this point, I'm going to comb this section of hair straight out from the head, 90 degrees from the head. I'm going to plant my knuckles at the base of her neck and then I'm going to bring my fingertips out and I want to start to visualize what my graduation is going to look like and I can just set my comb there and I can see if I go here that's the angle that I'm going to get. I have to go at an angle that's shorter than 45 degrees to see any kind of graduation at all because if not it's just going to be a one length or an undercut. So I'm going to pull this section out, plant my knuckles, bring my fingers. Let's start with that angle. And now when I bring my razor in here, I want to get the motor running and just slowly, gently go through with a broader stroke and cut that all the way down to the nape. And we end up with a straight, well, fairly straight line. Now we look at it, and I'm not going to judge, does this look good? I'm not going to judge. All I'm judging is, is this at about the length that I want my graduation to be? Because everything below that is going to be cut pretty short. So I'm looking at that length right there and trying to get an idea and seeing where my graduation is going to start to develop. If that looks good, I'll continue to the next section. The next section, I'm going to pivot from the center to the corner of the hairline on the left side. Pin this hair up out of the way if you need to and then I'm going to comb this back into the center. The most important part the most important part of this section is the center piece right here at the top of the occipital bone. I have to hold that exactly the same way because that's the guide for every other section in the back of the head. So that has to be held in exactly the same way. So to make sure that I'm doing that, that's what I'm going to be looking at first. Planting my knuckles, bringing my finger out, making sure that that piece of hair is held right in the center, get the motor running, and then work all the way down. I'm not worried about it being perfect right now. I just want to make sure I see my shape beginning to develop. That's it. I can't judge how good it is right now. Next section, I will split that in half. Pin that out of the way. Make sure I'm combing this back into the previously cut section and making sure that this centerpiece is being held in exactly the same way every time. Hold this out. There's my previously cut guide. Get the motor running for the razor stroke. 
work all the way down. If I run out of tension, bring that back. Again, comb this out, comb it into the previously cut section. Make sure that this center is held in exactly the same way. Get the same razor stroke going. And work all the way down and through. Now, I'm opening up this razor stroke a little bit more than when I was doing one leg to create a little bit more airiness and a little bit more lightness. Now, as we look at that, we can start to see the general shape taking place taking form. On the right side I've taken the center section which was the first section on the left side. Now I'm going to pivot, go to the corner of the hairline exactly like I did on the other side. The hardest thing about this haircut is I have to match both sides. On the right side it's easy for me to cut down. On the left side I would want to cut up but I can't cut up so I have to come in on the top and work my way down. So that's where most of the inconsistencies come in is where I'm trying to cut one side, the pattern is the same on both sides, but on the left side, the methodology of the application is different. It's a complete opposite than it is on the right side. So now I'm gonna comb this back into the center. There's my guide. There's the center section. Get everything kind of going, get the motor running, making sure my scissor stroke is about the same, as consistently as I can. Go through, I lost a little bit down through here. Last section, there's the center part, there's my guide underneath. Keep the razor stroke about the same. Come in. Calm down, look, you can start to see the shape here. The next section is going to be the same angle to the top of the ear. The more closely that I match this on each side, the better the shot that I have of getting both sides even. At this point, I'm going to go through and do exactly the same thing I did with my first section. It's just going to be the next section, but there's a couple of key things that I have to really pay attention to. So I'm going to start with my pizza section in the center of the head. But if we remember, the center of the first section that I took, I was holding that at 90 degrees from the head. At this section here, if I hold that at 90 degrees, I'm going to be holding it from here. So what ends up happening is I end up beveling my graduation. And I no longer end up with this real solid kind of stack and this heavy kind of line. So what I want to do is I want to hold this piece of hair here at what's called peak curvature. So I'll just lay the comb right there. That's the elevation that I'm going to hold the top of this section at. I'm going to go through, comb everything out from the head, guess at where I think that that's going to be. If I lift it too high, you can see the roots start to get real spongy. If I hold it too low, it starts to curve across the head, and I can start to see a reflection of the lights on the head. So I want to wiggle until I get that perfect curvature off the head, that perfect elevation, which is coming out like that. Using the bottom as my angle guide, come out, there's the line. Get the razor going, get the motor running, and slowly work that all the way through. Next angle will be to the corner of the hairline. The reason that I'm going off different points of the head is so that I can match it to the other side much more easily as opposed to just guessing. Now remember the center here has to be held in exactly the same way every time. There's the line. Work that down and through. Angle again, this one's going right to the mastoid, that bump behind the ear. This elevation here in the center is going to be held exactly the same way. I can't take the whole thing, so I'll take a little bit. There's my line. 
get the motor running. Continue that through. There's my guide that I'm going to. If there's anything too long, just go through, lay the razor against your finger, and cut anything off. And now we can start to really see my graduation developing. I'll separate this in half. There's my line. Keep my razor stroke the same. Cut that through. The last section here. Now, the last cut that we did, I was working horizontal and blunt. And I was cutting across the entire section at the same time. That's going to give the movement of this of the haircut where I'm cutting it blunt, it's going horizontal. Because I'm working this section perpendicular to the hair, the movement that I'm creating is going from center to forward. That's why it's so important for me to be able to match movements on both sides of the head and why I take the effort and the time to come up over so that I have the exact same razor motion on both sides of the head. Not bad, not bad. On the other side, we're gonna go through and I'm gonna take the center section again, pivot to the corner of the hairline, remembering to keep this at the same elevation every time. There's my previously cut line underneath. Get the razor stroke the same. Cut all the way through. Now let's look. The next section goes to the mastoid. That bump right behind the ear. Comb that through. There's the elevation. There's the line underneath. If I start running out of tension, just readjust. There we go. There's my line. Make sure my elevation on the center is correct. Hold that back into the previous section. I have to make sure that I slow myself down. Because once I start getting into a rhythm, I can find that I can go very, very quickly. And if I go too quickly, I can do myself a disservice by not being as diligent as I need to be. So slow down, be very methodical with the application. Now we can start to see our graduation really taking form, really taking shape. We start to get that nice kind of stack to it. On the last section, we're going to change it up a little bit. And that depending upon how thick their hair is, I will split this in half. Which her hair is pretty thick, so I'm just going to split it in half. And here, instead of pivoting out of the center, I'm just going to hold everything straight. So instead of pivoting everything out of the back, I'm going to hold everything straight down with a little bit of elevation, the same elevation that I had in the last section, which was going to be here, 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 and then flat. So I'm going to do the same sort of elevation and just hold everything down and cut. Make sure nothing hangs over it. I want to make sure I have an even amount of wetness. So a little bit of blade glide helps tremendously. Find the elevation, find my guide. 
same stroke as I work from the back to the front. If I happen to push a little something out, it doesn't give me what I want. Just clean that up a little bit as I go. Through here, hold down. There's my guide underneath. Keep my razor stroke consistent. And I'm not using pressure with the blade. I'm just letting the movement of the blade against the hair cut. The more pressure that I use on the blade, the more that it's going to push and the less consistent the cut line is going to be. Not bad. The next section, the next and final piece on this side, I'll do exactly the same thing. Elevation from the previous section, start in the center, and work towards the front. Anything that I miss, I take off. get around to the front it should be held at a very very low elevation her shoulders in the way so I'm trying to work around it the best I can if it was a human I would have her turn her head well not bad not bad now we we'll do the same thing on the other side so at this point I got 90% of the cut done so I'm gonna go through I'm gonna blow it dry and then I'm gonna come back in and fine-tune it and tighten it up to where it fits this particular head shape better, fits this particular type of hair. Then also fix any kind of little indiscrepancies that I may have created throughout. Okay, let's do that. I'll be back. All right, champions, here we go. This is our end result. And just using a razor, I feel pretty good about that. I mean, it's got a nice little shape. It's got a lot of movement. It's got a lot of texture to it. It's got a lot of softness, but we still have a nice, solid, kind of graduated shape. Now, I obviously want to go through and clean up my baseline and also clean up my transition from the back into the sides. I tend to use uh, a scissor when I uh, clean up my razor cutting just to point cut everything so I can keep a, a, a more control over it. There's some types of hair that don't react well with a razor on dry hair. So that's why I tend to use a scissor on dry hair. I prefer to use a razor on wet and then clean up with the scissor afterwards. Now, there's some times where I don't want a blunt line, so I will clean up with a texturizing or a thinning scissor to keep that kind of texture consistent. Sometimes I want to blunten the shape up and make it a little more solid, and then I'll go in with a straight scissor and clean that up. I can take as little or as much as I'd like, but I really want to just stick to this baseline here. And I'll keep my scissor fairly perpendicular to the hair to keep it really soft as opposed to going in and cutting it really blunt. I'm, I'm pretty content with this. We've got a nice kind of line going on. We've got a little bit longer in the front. Got a nice little stack of graduation going on. Got a nice angle. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, again, this is just an exercise in razor stroke and controlling the section, right? The larger the stroke that you're gonna have, the softer and the more diffused everything's gonna be. If I wanted to tighten this up and make it a lot cleaner and more solid shape, I would take a smaller stroke. If I wanted to remove more weight and make it much more airy, then I would increase my stroke. I could actually even vary it to where the underneath sections I take tight, and then the top layer I take a much looser stroke and lighten up everything on top, depending upon how thick the hair is and the end result that you're going for. So, section two, I'll see you next time.